What's up, nerds? Ladies and gentlemen from around the world, welcome to the final of GP Sao Paulo. You're in the booth with me. My name's Riley Knight, joined by my good friend and colleague, Paulo Vita Damita Rosa. On your screen, Leonardo Gucci on Abzan Traverse, Jose Paredes on Madu Pyromancer, Mira Mira on the wall. Which deck is the fairest of them all? It's got to be one of these two, Paolo. Yeah, it's definitely one of these two. I mean, they're both just fair. You know, that's the... I guess uh, that Jose has, you know, the, the Blood Moon cheese. Have seen, like, Blood mm. Moon? You know, he can win with that card alone sometimes, so he would be slightly less fair uh, than the Absent deck, which is just a straight fair deck. But, you know, this is, like, the 10 on the first kill and then 9.8. Echivera on the play here as he finished uh, second in the Swiss. Going to kick things off with a faithless looting. Nice start for the Pyromancer deck. And obviously they can uh, they can tend to take trips to uh, Loose Keep City with the, uh, with the you know, faithless looting often smoothing out those, uh, those loosey-goosey draw, uh, draws there. Yeah, I think that is for two reasons. The first one is that, you know, obviously you're more likely to keep a car, like a one lander or a hand that is flooded if you have faithless looting because it will fix that. And also, mulliganing when you have Fateless Looting in your deck is worse. Mm. Because Fateless Looting is a card that cares about quantity uh, way yeah, more than sure. quality. So you just go being down a card and having one fewer option to discard is pretty bad. That said, I'm surprised he discarded Bedlam Reveler there. It strikes me as one of the more powerful cards in this matchup. Because it is still an attrition war, whatever way you put it. Uh, and Battle and Reveler is a great card to have as the last card in your hand. Though it is often vulnerable to Thought Season Liliana. Uh, of the Veil just because it takes so long to cast. So that could be... And he has another one. Okay. That was the other uh, situation I was going to suggest there. Two Bedlam Revelers in hand. The second one is... I mean, we talk about diminishing returns. They don't diminish much harder than a second Bedlam Reveler. No, you need like a Teferi yeah. to be able to play both. You know, the, the original <laughs> Teferi, Major Zalfair, then it works. It's the same with uh, the Flame of Keld, as I learned during PD testing. It oh does yeah. not scale well in multiples. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You, you never want to draw too, too, many, uh, too many of those flames there. Gucci has uh, uh, kicked things off with a modern powerhouse in Tarmogoy. If Echivera is going to resolve another faithful looting here after flashing back a uh, Lingering Souls on turn two, that's a nice play from him. And of course, one of the kind of one-two punch that this uh, Pyromancer deck is pay capable of. He will often take turn two off to deploy a threat to the board. Maru, uh, obviously named after the Pyromancer, Maru Pyromancer there. Young Pyromancer, a terrific play on turn two as it rewards PV, the deck, for playing the game plan that it wants to play anyway. Yeah, I mean, the, the dream is that, you know, maybe you lead with a discard spell, you see the coast is clear, uh, then you play a Pyromancer, and then after that, you don't have to do anything other than react to what your opponent is doing. So you just remove everything they play, and as you're doing that, you're getting tokens, and eventually you just overwhelm them. That is the dream. It's it's version of, you know, a Dark Confident. And we see another Bedlam Reveler discarded by Echivera here. Nice. Yeah, there's another one in hand. He drew three. Oh, dear. And there's also a Colligan's Command to protect it, so... I guess this is the thing here where we have, uh, you know, those Bedlam Revelers hitting the bin, but it, it's not the end of the road for them because uh, there is the Raise Dead mode on, on Colligan's Command. Yeah, for sure. But Gyuchi, with a Tarmogoy, that I think is a 3-4, even though his graveyard is empty. Yeah, I mean, that... What a sick Kurt, life, huh? Yeah, Kurt is your, uh, your opponent's Fateless Looting. So yeah. He might just eat a, a Fatal Push here, but I'm not even sure Jose cares that much about that. He might do it anyway, because, uh, you know, that would make Battle Reveler slightly easier to cast, but still won't be able to cast it next turn regardless, so there's not that much incentive. And probably wants to use that Colgan's Command before he, he casts it anyway. Uh, if he can, that would be ideal. In comes the Goifsky, and it is going to eat that Fatal Push, as you mentioned. So Echivera obviously prioritizing removaling... Removaling? Removaling the Tamba Goifaler. Yeah, it is now removal -ed. It is removal -ed. Or maybe not. Oh, hello. Gucci has got... Uh, oh, is uh, he going to have to exile it? A trick or two up his sleeve. That would still see it be removal -ed. Yes, it would be really removal. -ed. It would be double, triple removal. -ed. Gyuchi, with that characteristic thumb flick. Oh, he's going to pop. They're going to pop the cards down on the table. Call the waiter over. Have a look at the menu, perhaps. Does yeah. that have the path to exile? That's what he's thinking about. Yeah, this is really one of those spots where you think before you do anything. Yeah. Because if he doesn't end up pathing there, we're all going to know he has path. Yeah. You know that is <laughs> like, you're not bluffing in that spot. You're really just considering your play. So, so what, what's the what's the first. what's the situation here? Why why is this the play here that Gucci's made? 
I believe it is, well, there's two reasons, right? The first one is insurance against Blood Moon. Okay. Right? Because if he doesn't path in now, he's not going to have another creature, and he doesn't have a forest in play. If Blood Moon hits, then he can't cast a spell. Mm. Uh, the second reason is that he just doesn't have any lands, and he has four mana cards in his hand, mm. and he doesn't really see a path target here. So he, he would rather, like, he might, I, I can't see his hand exactly, but he might have another removal spell, like, of some sort. He's not going to path Doken. That would just be too bad. I suppose in his mind, he thinks, okay, my two copy, my two uh, targets for my path to exile is either Young Pyromancer or Bedlam Reveler, right? I've got a Siege Rhino in hand. I want to deploy this bad boy. I want to get this Thumper onto the battlefield and start clipping in for four. If that's the case, the path to exile is best used then as a sort of weird kind of harrow. Yeah, creature o if you will, to get a land <laughs> out of the, uh, uh, to get a land out of the uh, out of the library. Yeah, I mean, it, this is the spot you can also think of it. You know, would you sacrifice the land to put a path to exile in your hand in this spot? And the answer is no. He wants his fourth land. Yeah. So he would rather have the land than path to exile. So it follows logically that he should just path to exile it. Okay, that's a great way to look at it. That's actually, I mean, that you, it may sound very simplistic to you, but that kind of view actually changes things considerably. If you look at the path and you're like, I'd actually rather just, just a basic, and even better, a basic on the battlefield. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Like, would you cycle that path if you could? Well, the answer is probably. And what are you hoping to draw if you cycle it? A, a land. land. So might as well just get a land immediately. So I like that play for Leonardo. Because the time ago is going away anyway. There's no way to stop that. Yeah. Well, three mana now for Kiyuchi. Looks like he's not going to commit that uh, Rhino to the board just yet. He may have a land and a follow-up two drop if he chooses to play Luliana. Wow. He's really... Uh, Toing and froing with these decisions, <laughs> and again, the weight is called over to the table. Yeah, at least he didn't he didn't give anything away with this one. I don't think. Looks like he's tossing up between a couple of different options in hand. We see Liliana of the Veil. I think that's a uh, a lingering souls. I'm leaning over to the left of the screen. You know, like when your your little brother's playing Mario Kart and starts turning the controller to try to oh, make yeah, it. Oh yeah, your little brother or you. I never did that. No, I mean me. I deny it straight. Well, you're the little brother, yeah. aren't you? I am. Yeah, yeah there you I go. I have two older brothers. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course you are. There you are. There's a Lingering Souls now from uh, Leonardo Giucci. And he does have a second land as well, so we may see a follow-up play there. Do you know what we used to do my sister? I've told you this story about what we used to do when we were playing Mario Kart with my sister. What did you do? So we would plug in two controllers, me and my brother. <laughs> and then <laughs> give her a fake controller? Give her a third controller that wasn't plugged in. Hide one of our controllers under the blanket or, or you know, a way where she wouldn't see it. And we're like, oh, you're doing really well, Mill. Well done. You're going, well, you're winning like that. She had no idea. Wow, that's, that's deep. Like, she's that she's, she's so tough. She's such a tough lady now. She had to grow up with two of the Do, most. Does <laughs> she know you did that? I think she does now. I mean, it's now on the public record. <laughs> Mill, if you are listening and you did hear this, I'd like to take this opportunity to say that I'm deeply, deeply uh, pleased with myself, having done that for years and years. No apologies yeah, here. That is hey, fair. she deserved it. She was born after the two of us. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean... It is her fault. Absol it is absolutely her fault. My brother, my younger brother got an absolute pasting from me, of course, whenever he could. Here's a Colligan's Command. It's the Lord of the Jungle, PV. The, that, the Lord all. of the Jungle? No, it's the Law of the Jungle. Oh, the Law. Okay, yeah. okay, I see it. Sorry, I, I misheard you. Yeah. And also, that is, yeah, the older brother is the Lord of the Jungle, or the older sister. Top of the pile, man. Are you, are you the oldest or the, the middle? Very, very proudly so. Very, okay. very proudly so. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So we're going to see a Battle of Reveler finally. Uh, I don't think we are, actually. In Inquisition is going to be the uh, the play here for Echivera. Have a look at this one. So the options are Liliana, two different flavors thereof. Siege Rhino immune to the uh, Inquisition. Yeah, and you know, the last Hope Liliana looking much better than the Veil vale Liliana in a spot like this. So that's probably what's going to go. Where is the call against command in the graveyard? I don't see it. Oh, he, he's now split his graveyard into two piles. Oh, and, and one, one, of is one, of is one is off camera? One of them is off camera. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah it's not, <laughs> all it's right, not so ideal. He, he can't cast the Reveler. We just don't know that he yeah. can. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's not ideal. It's not the optimal viewing experience, but you can see both players now interacting with that off-screen graveyard. Maybe we can see if we can get that fixed up. We might get the coverage team to, uh, to get across there and get that graveyard inside. I can see a couple of furrowed brows there. They're going to take care of that for us right here, right now. Three cards off the top now, thanks to that Bedlam Reveler. What a card this is. Oh, yeah, that card is super good. It, it, it's surprising it took as long as it actually took for it to be more play. Uh, but I'm kind of interested in what is the methodology for the second graveyard, you know? Because you could think, well, spells in one side, permanents mm. in another, so that I can more easily count for the Battle Reveler, but no, there's a fitness looting in there. I think it's just real estate. So I think it's purely just real estate. Okay. And now look at Gu Giucci. He's <laughs> got a, a, a way that he wants his opponent to uh, organize that graveyard over there as well. 
So Liliana, the last hope, hits the bin here. Yeah, and the big question is, do you want to trade your tokens for your opponents? I think the answer is probably no, because you know they have a Liliana of the Veil in hand, so if you just trade both tokens, you lose your Battling Raveler and probably the game in a spot like death. Well, that bad, huh? Well, you know, I'm a bit overdramatic, but... No, never. Any, anyone can win this game from here, but, you know, it, you wouldn't like that position. Polovita Damita Rosa, ladies and gentlemen, in my estimation, is a gentleman who, seeing a glass that was three quarters full, would still describe it as half empty. <laughs> Look, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm a realist. I don't, want you, I don't want you to say that you're a realist. I just did. I don't want you to say that. But I am. I don't want you to say that. The world is not. The world is more silver lining than cloud power. Look, it doesn't matter if the glass is half full or half empty. It's because just, it's, it's refillable. Yes. Okay. That's good. I like that. That's much more optimistic. Here's the siege rhino yeah. for Leonardo Gucci, and that's a nice answer, at least theoretically, to that uh, opposing Bedlam Reveler. It's going to hold it off yeah, some percentage of the time, at least. Yeah, and the life gain is pretty good. And the fact that he attacks through the tokens because he has trample. Oh, yeah. So, the Bella Reveler is going to be a 5-6 or even a 6-7 this turn because there's a Mana Morphos. But, yeah, I really like the interaction. Uh, you know, Fale is looting uh, Bella Reveler. It's kind of like it goes both ways. The looting, you play it early, and then you fill your grave it for the Reveler. Mm -hmm. But once you do play the Reveler, you draw three cards, and you are at a spot in the game where a lot of cards don't matter. Yeah, you can you get know, rid of the Dutskies. Yeah. yeah, so like, you know, Thoughtseize, Inquisition are often bad in the late game. Extra lands are bad, so you just discard those to the Fateless Looting. In this case, he's discarded the Manamorphos, which is, I, I think, rather perplexing, considering that it's a, it's just a free prowess trigger in most situations there, Paolo. Yeah, probably doesn't feel like he needs okay. uh, the, the prowess trigger at this point, and all his other cards are more valuable. Like, he would rather have an Inquisition that is taking a Liliana than a random card that comes attached with a prowess trigger. But, I mean, can't he just... Cycle the the metamorphos and then target, but then cast that uh, that Inquisition off of it. Well, he would have to keep uh, a land for that, okay. and then he would have to discard Bolt. I believe that was what would happen. Uh, right. Though I, I think he he might have kept a land anyway. Yeah, it seems to me that uh, that's the case. Looks so. like a Bloodstained Mire there. Looks like it's uh, going to be a, a uh, fifty fifty flip here between Inquisition of Kozilek and a uh, Grim Flayer there. Yeah, I think... I'm wondering why he didn't discard the land instead. I think I would rather have a Mana Morphos in my hand than a land. Even though the land does allow him to cast a bolt immediately, I don't think he really cares about that. I don't think he's going to bolt anything. I mean, yeah, what's the bolt going to target, right? Well, yeah. we are going to see the, uh, the Bedlam Reveler get busy offering the trade here. Doesn't play the land for that bolt, too. So just straight up offering a trade. Gucci's not going to take it. Oh. Oh. Wants to keep He's that really set. not going to take it in either either of the meanings. Uh, I, it's a bit surprising to me, I guess. I would, I, I guess I would lean towards blocking. I mean, that is a five, right? It's a five six. Yeah. Yeah. So if he blocks with Rhino and two tokens, I think it's that's not a not a, a disfavorable exchange. No, I mean he just likely trades Rhino for Bedlam Reveler, which I think he would want to do, but. Well, anyway, you slice it. Echevera rumbles across with his uh, prowess monster, who uh, reverts back to being a 3-4 now that the action is with Leonardo Guichi. Does have that siege rhino. I can imagine that, you know, just be you know that BBD, if he's watching this, he's at home just, just beating his <laughs> chest, ready to watch this siege rhino rumble. He just wishes it was an Obsidad, I know that. Yeah, siege rhino does rumble. And it's going to do that right here, right now. BBD runs around the room, high-fiving everyone he can see, I imagine. You know, every time I see like this attack, right, he could have attacked with two tokens, with one or with zero, mm. right? And I'm always wondering, what is the thought process behind attacking with exactly one? Exactly one. Not zero and not two. Yeah. And it, I think it's one of the hardest things in Magic because it's so hard to, like, quantify. You know, it's like you're basically just guessing at that point. And... I mean, that's what, that's what, remember Frank wrote that article about uh, acting randomly sometimes, like rolling a die to uh, determine whether you're going to uh, block a creature or not? Uh, I I believe I I read that Maybe article. Maybe skimmed it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm usually in the business of you know my own choices will be better than render. Otherwise, why am I even doing this? Do you want to be a master of your own destiny? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I believe I can get more than fifty percent. I believe th this applies to situations where you really could make either play, 
and you don't want your opponent to know what you do all the time. Yeah. So okay. you don't want yourself to be biased. Like you have like a liar's pendulum, you know? Yeah. It's a card you can either lie yeah. or you can tell the truth. And sometimes they're like, well, I, I'm just going to roll a die and decide. So if you think they're better at reading you, for example, than you are at hiding things, uh -huh. then at that spot, yeah, you want it to be random rather than your opponent uh, you know, reading you. But for my own decisions, most of the time, yeah, I'm not going to roll up. Yeah, so you say you're a coward is what you're saying? No, I'm confident. You're confident? Yeah. Okay. I'm confident that I'll get better than 50% in a two choice. Well, it's always only going to be 50-50. Any choice between two options, it's only 50. Because it either happens or it doesn't. Yeah, but I might as well just choose my 50 then. Well, then I just choose your 50. I want to be accountable. Yeah, okay, that's uh, good. I like that angle. Yeah, yeah. yeah you you want to be uh, you want to be the master of your own destiny. You want an to be answerable. Yeah, and I, wa I want the rewards too. Like, if it works out, I'm like, okay, I did I this. I I'm, there was I'm great. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, knew there was, I knew there was a twist in the tale there. Gucci dumps his hand onto the battlefield here. We see two drop, three drop in the form of Grimflayer into Liliana of the Vale. Now, Echu here certainly taking his time with the decision how, as how to press forward. Uh, Paolo, he's got a lightning bolt in hand. That can directly contest that Liliana, uh, in addition to those uh, flying spirits here. But what's the way forward for Echivera? He's on eight. He's under a bit of pressure. But uh, he certainly has uh, the card advantage right now. He does. But yeah, the cards in play are so much better for Leonardo. Uh, and yeah, that is the, you know, I guess, very conservative play. Well, we're going to see another Lingering Souls here. Yeah, the problem is that both the creatures have Trample. So the Bell and Reveler really can't attack, I don't think. Because if it does attack, then maybe, you know, Liliana just dies. And then how do you deal with those two Tramplers? So Bell and Reveler has to stay back to block, and then if you have Bell and Reveler plus Bolt, mm -hmm. uh, that, that works. What you can do is you attack Liliana with both tokens. Uh, then, assuming one gets blocked uh, on uh, Leonardo's upkeep, you Lightning Bolt the Liliana, which will give you a 4-5 on defense. Yeah, right. Because you both are on their turn. Uh, but if you're going to do that, I'm not really sure why he played the Lingering Souls before. I would rather just not give your opponent the information. Looks like Echevere is actually going to give uh, Gucci a free activation of that Liliana here. Yeah, he will get to you know eat one of the 4-4s four because of that, whereas Leonardo might not even attack if, if he knows those uh. are... Well, but now, now it's yeah, a, now's a problem. Point. This is going to force the, the issue here for Echivera as he has Collective Brutality and Lightning Bolt in hand. So he's going to lose that Brutality if he uh, snaps off the Lightning Bolt, which I imagine he kind of has to do here. Yeah, I think, well, he, yeah, I think yeah. his line that he was thinking about was, I'll pass, and then my opponent will attack with, you know, Sid Rhino and Green Flare. Then I'll block Green Flare with a token and bolt it. So to finish it off. Oh, poor old Echeverry. <laughs> he's been told not to split his graveyard, and so now he's having I mean, to really make concessions. Dude, well, it's that's okay. because he, he's just putting it in this weird pile. Obviously, he's going to run out of room yeah, at some point. Just make it one pile. Just keep it on the playmat, man. That's all we wanted. I'm sorry. I feel bad that we, <laughs> we just absolutely <laughs> torn into shreds here. Dude, you didn't see the way he put the... the, he, put was the he, sad? he put the collective brutality down in a new graveyard pile next to it, and he was like, oh, I can't do that. He put it on top of it. Oh, poor bloke. I'm sorry, Echeverry. Came down here like a ton of ricks before. Now I feel very bad. So it's interesting when when the guy in the quarterfinals had his lens above his spells. Oh, there's no you were like, spell. burn him. There's no excuse. So burn the witch. Yeah, and yeah. now we're like, oh, poor guy. He has to put his collective brutality in his graver pile and yeah. not like a mile away. Exactly. We, okay. like, you were making the case before, Polo Rita, Peter, Dama de Rosa, that there should be DQs handed out to people that do things that mildly annoy you. Well, yeah, that's true. Well, uh, okay. Well, then we're, uh, you know, then I, I'm sure you can see my point of view. <laughs> Here's a lingering souls from the bin. That's going to free up that real estate a little bit here for Echivera. Income two tokens as well. Gucci not going to take the trade. Yeah, and you know things are looking surprisingly better for uh, Echivera, who I, I guess now you know it's a, it's gamble. Does he have a spell or does he not have a spell? Like he has a card he just drew, and we don't know what it is. If it's a spell, then attacking could be devastating. If it's not a spell, attacking could be pretty good. So I think at this point you kind of have to risk it because what's the alternative, right? The more that you pass the turn, the more likely it is that you're going to actually draw a spell and the more damage you will take in the air. And there are not that many instants in this uh, Mardu Paramus. No, that's true. There really aren't. The, it's, it's, I mean, a lot of the, the powerful interaction comes at sorcery speed, whether it's uh, Liliana or the Veil or, you know, things like uh, the um, uh, hand disruption spells. It's a mischievous mis mis ball. It's a mischievous ball, we'll call it. It is. He targeted himself, which I don't believe is the best choice. You want to just get a bit more information? I think so. Yeah. I mean, he it's 
Also, there's the green flare. You know, he will... He can target himself after that, right? Uh, but maybe, you know, that... Looking at the top card might change his decision on whether he attacks or not, right? If he looks and he sees a path to exile, he can be like, okay, I'll just pass and play it safe, and then pass your battle and Raveler, and then I can attack, but... Also, it's bad if you... I guess it doesn't really matter. Like, he just gave up on looking at the top card of Echeveria's deck for that, so maybe it's even better to look at yours and make a more informed decision. It is really close. I do believe he has to attack here regardless, though. Well, he's certainly uh, taken your advice on, uh, on board here, Polo, and he's got in with both the Rhino and the Flyer, and uh, Echeveria is going to block. Yeah, and there's also the factor that uh, Echeveria didn't attack with more tokens when he could have. So, like, if it, he has, like, you know, a Terminate type of card in his hand, we might just see a bigger attack on his turn, then leaving all those tokens back. So, no Grim Flayer triggers. Away goes the Bedlam Reveler. The Rhino gets across. Gucci using that latest Bleeding Edge, te edge technology to draw the card off of his uh, Bauble trigger here. Echivera does have quite a sizable air force, but again, Siege Rhino, a great way to punch damage through uh, Lingering Souls. Yeah, and I mean, this was the reason it was given Trample, right? They they said that when we were developing Sage right now, it was like, there's just too many tokens in this format, mm -hmm. Elspeth and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This card can't just be brick wall by them, so we give it Trample so he can't be chump blocked by tokens every turn. And then people and ended up playing like seven copies of Vanilla Dicks, and it, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, it ended up really good. Yeah. But, you know, the it remains the fact that, you know, oh, Trample was super relevant against tokens. Well, I can sniff something out here because Echivera has drawn... Yes, okay, there it is, a Dreadbore. I was going to say, he has to have found something. Jeez, you can see he's just itching to split that graveyard into two, the two piles, but he's not doing it. So Siege Rhino down, Echivera with the Blood Moon in hand as well, and four 1-1 one, one Flyers. Paolo, Gucci needs something to, uh, to contest this. A Lingering Souls of his own would be great, but he doesn't have it. Yeah, it looks like he doesn't have anything. Lightning Bolt as well. Yeah, we're probably not even see that many that Blood Moon be played because he could just draw a black card that he can't cast. Well, apparently he's playing. Oh, no, he's not. Okay. Double wrong. Oh, no, I had to give myself the ant buzzer. I was so <laughs> ready to just absolutely dunk on you for that call, but oh, never mind. He, he shouldn't play it. I mean, now he has lethal if his opponent has nothing because he drew Lightning Bolt. So why cast the Fatal Slooting? Well, there's no real reason to cast a pre-combat, I guess. Yeah, just test the waters, get in there, put your opponent to three, and then cut, uh, chuck a bolt at their face. Let's let's get it done. Yeah, and look at this. Gucci packs them up like you wouldn't believe. Speed of light. And a big round of applause from the uh, huge crowd that has stuck around here. Generally, PV at, uh, at GP's office, often the, uh, the, the Sunday night magic tends to be a bit of a quiet affair. People are kind of packed up. All the events are, uh, are winding down. People tend to head home nice and early. Not so here, Mr. Secretary. Look at this. We've got a big crowd in tonight. Yeah, there are a lot of people. There are a bunch of events that just ended, like yeah. the PTQ just ended. Of course, and the, the Unlimited, unlimited Draft. Unlimited Draft yep. just ended. So everyone's just hanging around here. And also my friends have to wait for me. So they're, they're not pleased about that. No, I bet. But I bet. Yeah. So yeah, there are a lot of... Way more people here than I'm used to. Yeah, in, it's, it's in, fantastic. And I tell you yeah. what, I tell you what, I don't want to make sweeping generalizations about, <laughs> a, you know, an entire culture and a group of people, but bloody hell, you Brazilians are noisy. Jeez, you love to make a lot of noise, don't you? We you get do. up and about like I wouldn't believe. Yeah, I mean, have you seen like Vuvuzelas? Oh my goodness, yes, of course. It's, it's, <laughs> yes, so yeah. That, that embodies our... The day that they start <laughs> to get to brought to magic events is going to be a rough time for the eardrums of magicians around the world. My goodness me. Yeah, we're definitely allowed. If you've ever seen a top eight announcement with you know a couple of Brazilians mm. in it, you'll you'll you've noticed that we can we tend to be quite loud. Yeah, and you'll yeah. do it. It doesn't even have to be Brazilian. Anyone remotely south, a Portuguese person. Yeah, Anyone but, like, those are honorary Brazilians too because they speak the same language. And so hang on, a, a Portuguese honorary Brazilians or a Brazilians honorary Portuguese in that no, situation? Uh, I mean. Brazil is huge and Portugal is tiny. So who, who is you know, or you talk about how the older brother. Yeah, right. This and, is this is my question. Like, imagine if you had a younger brother, yeah. but he was fifty times your size. Yeah. Who would you feel was the, the the bigger brother? You know, you because you're like a couple years older. Yeah. Or or the giant that is your brother. So yeah, right. Same thing. So the so the original younger brother, which was Brazil, has now sort of you know hit the gym. Just absolutely stacked on a bunch of muscle, and this nerdy Portugal is just all of a sudden now you know trembling under your shadow. Yeah, that's essentially how I would put it. Yeah. See, Australia has a similar thing with New Zealand, right? There's definitely the <laughs> older brother, younger brother thing there, but we kept them in their place. I'll tell you that. We kept them in their place. <laughs> Poor old Kiwis around the world. Very, very fond of them, I have to say. I'm not allowed to say this publicly, so I won't, but Australia generally, obviously, we, you know, we like to 
make a lot of fun of Kiwis, but I tell you oh, what. Oh, I, I love Portugal yeah. too. Yeah. It is. But don't just don't, you can't say that to anyone in public. Okay, I won't then. Well, no, I'm asking, is that the question? Is oh, that like, no, I can't. Oh, you can? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. there's right. no rivalry of any sort. I mean, I just said they're honorary Brazilians, yeah. so Brazil and Portugal are pretty close, I think. All right, okay, so there seems to be a lot more, yeah, you're a lot more open about your affection, whereas Australians and Kiwis have to, you know, we're sort of at arm's length, but actually, you know, there's the secret handshake, the wink and all that sort of stuff. We, uh, we do love the Kiwis across the ditch, even though, you know, our superiority is by this stage well and truly uh, very oh, yeah. much established. Of course. Just as uh, Jose Echeverria established his superiority in game number one of this match between Abzan and Mardu. Did that one kind of pan out as planned uh, as far as you as you thought there? Is Mardu, has that, has, have they got the edge? We didn't see Blood Moon uh, having an effect, but ultimately uh, Echeverria just found those edges, those percentage points that got, got his mid-range list over the top. Yeah, I think Mardu has a light edge. I mean, both decks are, you know, they have the same strategy and the same angle. So it's hard to say that one is very advantage over the other. Mm -hmm. But I believe there are some cards in the Mardu deck, namely, you know, Bell and Reveler and Blood Moon, mm -hmm. that kind of break the symmetry a little bit. Because if the Mardu deck plays an early Blood Moon and, you know, the Absent deck doesn't have its basics, no, it is a list with Traverse. So if you find your one forest, then, you know, you can Traverse for your other basics and stuff like that. Uh, you can path your own creatures, uh, but it is possible that Blood Moon just finishes a game by itself, right? But and there's no card in the Absent deck that can do that. And, and and the thing about the Bedlam Reveler as well is that there's not really a an analog for that in in Absent. Bedlam Reveler is a, a, a machine. It draws extra cards. It's a relevant threat. It's cheap to cast. It's easy to cast eventually as well. And there's no real card in the Absent list where you can slam it on turn eight and expect to immediately just ram yourself way out ahead. Yeah, and I mean that that is the big difference, right? The the Battle of Reveler is a haymaker that as you said, there's no equivalent in Absent. Mm, mm. So if you're if we're both empty handed, you know, as those games tend to go, because there's so much discard, so much disruption, everything dies. So we're both empty handed. Uh I draw Battle of Reveler, there's nothing in your deck that you can draw that will have a similar effect. That's gonna catch like you. Like Battle of Reveler no. is just the ultimate trump. Yeah. You know? And other than that, Lingering Souls is probably the most important card, but both decks have that and they don't necessarily have more access to it than the other. Because, like, there's Straightless Looting and Battle and Rebel for one deck, but there's also Green Flare and, you know, uh, Grizzly Salvage for mm. the other deck. So I'd say both decks have roughly uh, you know, similar access to Lingering Souls, but, yeah, there's no comparison to Battle and Rebel. These lists have been published at uh, dailymtg.com. You can get across them there if you're wishing to see the technology available to Guichi and Echeverria as they head into game number one. Let's very quickly talk about the sideboard of the Abzan player here. One Thrun, one Kataki, one Gaddock, one Eidolon of Rhetoric, a Shriekmore Reclamation Sage, and a, a Maelstrom Pulse and Bajuka Bog as the one of Double Damnation, Double Surgical, and Double Fulminator Mage also for Abzan. Uh, on Mardu's side of things, we have a Singleton Collective Brutality, Singleton Nihil Spellbomb, two of Engineered Explosives, Rabble Master, Kambal Extraction, and Wear Tear, and then Molten Rain as a three of as well. Both these players bringing uh, ready, uh, bringing lots of technology to destroy lands. What are the cards from both decks that we're going to keep a, a close eye on post board here, PV? Well, I think those sideboards are, you know, they give you prime opportunities to make your deck worse if you're not careful. Oh, really? Because there are certain cards that look like they could be okay, but I don't think they are. For example, I don't think you should have Surgical Extraction in this matchup. Because, you know, even though Lingering Souls is a very powerful card, it's very important, you cannot afford to have a card that potentially doesn't do anything in a matchup where you're trying to one for one your opponent yeah. all the time. Yeah, that's so a great point. At every situation, you need to cut your cards to be live if you want to get ahead. And so even being down a single card, it's, it, it's just not an acceptable situation. Yeah, it definitely isn't. And it is a card that, you know, you could potentially bring in as either of those decks, but I don't think either of them should. Okay. Uh, there's also, like, Damnation. You know, if you're like, oh, I lost to a bunch of tokens and young Pyromancer, you know, making you know, Lingering Souls, I could have the Sweeper. But I don't think you should have that either. I think you just try to, you know, play on equal footing. Don't have a card that is potentially very bad. Uh, there are some cards that would be good, though. I think Thrun is a card you want to have. Really? Uh, yeah, I think so. They can't remove it. They have to, like, basically chum block it all the time. Yeah, right? I guess what, the only answer is, like, a, a Liliana on an empty board. Yeah, but I don't think they even play that. Uh, but there's one Liliana in, in uh, Echeverry is that. Yeah, right. So, and I think, you know, Bojuka Bog is just a better land yeah. if you're going to have. So you might not take out a spell for it, but you can just replace any land from your deck with a Bojuka Bog. And it will be good because it, it's good against Battle and Reveler and 
And you can search it up there and with your resource. traverse. Yeah, you can yeah. search it with traverse. Four copies of it, basically, which is fantastic. We're off to the races. In any case, Leonardo Guichi and Jose Echeverra. Got a Mexican wave going around the uh, <laughs> around the uh, the tournament floor by the sound of things. Oh, no, it's Willie Adel handing out oh, all sorts of... Look at that. I want to get over. I want some of that. Oh, I want that too. I don't oh. know what it is, What's but I, I, I love he's freebies. Yeah, free stuff. I want some of that. Oh, he's chucking me into the crowd too. This is very bad. We have to watch, <laughs> watch this game of magic. Oh, never, hashtag, never lucky. Hashtag never lucky. Yeah. Maybe there will be some left. No, no, there won't. No, they won't have scrolled <laughs> out of way for us. Uh, a, of course, now a uh, traverse the Ulfenwald. So look at this. Guichi taking Blood Moon insurance very, very seriously. He doesn't want to get mooned by his opponent here. Yeah, he definitely does not. And I believe he already has a Swamp and a Planes in hand now, so he's pretty good. And yeah, I think the last card he wants to bring in is Maelstrom Pulse, which, you know, does he with Battle and Raveler or a bunch of tokens yeah. from either Pyromancer or, or Lingering Souls. It is interesting that uh, he didn't sack that bubble, which I think is perfectly fine. Uh, you know, you want to wait for a spot uh, where you can, you know, sack the bubble and then decide if you want to keep the card on top or not because you have a fetch line. So, so uh, if Echeverry is hoping to uh, get any kind of value out of any Blood Moon, he's going to have a very bad time because we've got all basics all day. Oh, yeah. I mean, Blood Moon now, it would effectively just stop a future Liliana for his opponent. That's what it would do. Uh, Chariot doesn't have many great cards himself either to side in. Like those decks, they usually uh, have their cyborg to shard up their weaknesses from the main. They have so much removal in it mm -hmm. that they have to take out against certain decks that they need cyborg last for those decks. Uh, you know, there's like, you know, surgicals, multi rains, and stuff like that. I do believe he wants Goblin Rabble Master because I think that is just a threat that ends the game by itself. So even if you play it, it leaves for one or two turns and they kill, you get an advantage. And I think that's what you're looking for in a matchup like this. He also probably wants the Nihil Spellbomb. You know, you don't want Surgical as a Graveyard Hate card because yeah. it costs you a card, but Nihil Spellbomb doesn't cost you anything. So you play as many of those as you have. Um, in this case, it's one. And I like Engineered Explosive against this deck too because both uh, Tarmogoyf and Green Flare cost two. So both of the main threats uh, and also the Scavenging News, which is quite good in this matchup. Uh, and then in a pinch, you can kill all your opponent's Lingering Souls tokens. Echeverra thought this way a Tarmogoyf, but unfortunately for him, one of the two draws that Guichi took this turn uh, reveals another Goyfski here. And so it looks like a two-drop is going to be committed on turn number two, right on time. And uh, it's still, wow, it's already pretty big, a 4-5. Yeah, and the bubble's gone now. <laughs> and even if you're going to, you know, if you're going to play a bubble and you're going to sack it, uh, so the, you want to draw a card in your next turn, right? So you're going to sack it either way. Mm -hmm. It is still better to sack it in your opponent's turn because then the card that you draw cannot be discarded. Yeah. So if you sacked it first, he would have drawn a card on his turn, on his opponent's turn, and then maybe that would have got Totsies, for example. So it's, it's better to just do it on, on your opponent's turn anyway. Terminate takes care of that Tamagoyf here. And now Goichi. Three basics, all of them white-boarded. At least they're not mismatched. Not that they possibly really could be. <laughs> I guess a blackboarded one would be pretty tilting in there. Scavenging Ooze, the play now, so another two drop hitting the battlefield here for uh, Guichi Man. And quite a good one at, at that. Uh, it's really, really important in this matchup. Though it, it will probably just get Call Against Commander now when there's no green mana available. Like, ideally, you're using Call Against Command to return something from your graveyard. Uh, but you will you will cast it to make them discard a card anyway if you have to. You have to work very hard with Call. It's possible. But you have to work really hard not to two for one your opponent with the call against command. Oh, it's very difficult. Yeah. It's very difficult not to. And you know, this is even you know this is post board. Uh, there are not going to be any bad cards in in the artist's hand, so it's always going to be a relevant card. Now Guichi there does uh, discard a path to exile rather than casting it, and his opponent's like, "What's going on there, buddy? Just cast them." I mean, that's much better. He's like, "No, nope, got all my basics already. Don't even need it. Don't even need it, my friend. Not even going to tap this planes. Don't need to. Don't want to." Yeah, I mean, this is a spot where he could have uh, pathed his own creature, and then he would effectively... Uh, so, Duress Mode activated on Collective Brutality, and look at that, we got two pair in the hand of Echeverra. Yeah, Collective Brutality is a card that is not great against Mardu, because, you know, a lot of the time, you are somewhat in the late game, the card you care about is Battle and Reveler, mm -hmm. and it doesn't discard that. Uh, but it does kill Young Pyromancer in really turn important. two. And, yeah, that's really important. You can't let that creature live. Back to Guichi now as we see Marsh Flats come down. And I think he's just shipped. So this is a, certainly a slower game. These players trading off resources in the early turns. Guichi with the questions. Uh, but Echeverra with the answers. 
Yeah, and I think this is how this matchup should go most of the time. It's very hard to get a big advantage on board. Like, unless multiple lingering souls are involved, which I guess they were in game one, or an Anencer, Paramencer, or Green Flare, but as a general rule, I would expect that most things that I play will die, and whoever has the best thing standing was yeah. going to win. Yeah, when the dust settles, it's kind of whichever creature is left there to uh, to pick up all the pieces is, is, is will often be able to carry the entire game on their shoulders. Well, we'll see how things progress now, as uh, that Marsh Flats finds a sacred foundry. Echivera Echir goes back to that weird library and graveyard positioning. Both of these players highly unorthodox library positioning, I have to say. Yeah, unless there's only one this time. But we'll, we'll see what yeah. happens when he, <laughs> when he... When he runs out of that... Uh, where do you put your library? Sorry? Where do you put your library? Um, to the right. Top right? Yeah, yeah. top right. Like a like a, an actual human. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. We've established that you aren't a, a magic robot. <laughs> have we? Yeah, we got to gotta have... It was a classic PV quote. You've got to have a heart to hate. Yeah? Yeah. Uh. Either that or you're a very, very advanced future bot. Here's a thought sees now, and have a look at the grip uh, that Guichi's working with. I Three. mean, that's, yeah, that's going to be a Siege Rhino almost for sure. Yep. Easy game, easy choice now for Echivera. And uh, now that he's seen that Shriek, more now that he's seen that Abrupt Decay, he can find ways uh, to leverage the position to, to have those cards be have as little impact as possible. Yeah, and it's definitely easy to do. Uh, with a card like Shrek Maw, you know? Now, if he draws a young power message, he's not just going to play it. Yeah. He's going to wait until he can play a spell uh, and then get a token out of it. Or several, like if he finds a Manamorphose or something like that, he's going to be really happy to get as much value as possible. Of course, Shriek Maw, a sorcery speed uh, terror effect. Sometimes with a 3 2 staple to it. How many Shriek Maws have you cast in time? Fair few? Oh, yeah, quite, quite a lot. There was a deck when Shriek Maw came out that it, it played four Shriek Maws and it played Muldrifter and Makeshift Mannequin. Oh, yeah? I don't oh. know if you... Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah you bring it back with the Mannequin. Yeah, that was wow. a, a really cool deck. I played that a fair bit. Uh, would you? What's the percentage on Evoke versus Non-Evoke or Shriek Maw? Oh, uh, I guess most of the time I Evoke it. So, like, 80-20? Oh, no, less than that, probably, like, 70-30. 70-30. Also, like, with Living End, you almost never cast it. Yeah. So, and I've played Living End a fair bit, too. Yeah. So, that, that skews the percentages. So, maybe, yeah, maybe about 80-20 when you consider everything. Echivera shifts it back to Guichi. He's going to have a look at the top card. Wow, asserting his dominance. Just pick up that top card. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't see what it was, unfortunately. Nope. And he just absolutely went for it here. Going to see a Lingering Souls now off the top from Guichi. Yeah, and that, that is probably the card he wants to draw, right? It's it's one of the few cards from his side of the board that is that is you know, a 2-for-1 or better. Here are the 1-1s uh, the one -ones and an Overgrown Tomb to round out the term here for Guichi. Finally finds that fourth land. Of course, no Rhino to uh, commit to the board just yet. Yeah, I believe that is a Young Pyromancer. Uh, whether it will get played right now or not depends on, you know, I think it probably shouldn't even get played. No, I don't think so either. Yeah, Lerner is in four lands, and he is going to be able to, like, basically free roll that streak point if he draws a fifth land. Yeah, that seems bad. So what you probably want to do is wait until you have, like, at least two spells. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you need two, three spells to be able to cast it immediately. Echivera's deck is full, chock full of cheap spells, and he's already got five lands, so he, he just needs a couple more uh, ingredients to really... Uh, bring this pot to the boil. He's having to think about it, though. It's obviously not that easy a decision. No, and there's also abrupt decay in his opponent's hand that he knows of. So even if he has a bunch of sorceries, that won't really work. Yeah, he's going to have that mana. Uh, so yeah, it is a very interesting decision. Oh, he ships. I like this. I have to say, I, I, I like that line. Yeah, I, I can. I'm, I'm fine with that too. I don't really know what he has in hand other than a lightning bolt and a pyromancer. Like there might be like a Colgus command. Gucci. Two mana. We may see a Lingering Souls flashed back. Yes, indeed. So two more one ones enter the fray. Yeah, and Echeveria would really like an explosive about now, like continue to explode this, because uh, that would just get rid of all four tokens. But from the Nardis side, you can't really play around it. You know, you only have two tokens. Your plan is at 12. That takes six turns. That's way too many. Inquisition off the top here. And we see a lot of players in this type of matchup take out some of their discard. Uh, you know, because the games do get to those top deck wars, yeah. and then this card is not a card you want to draw. Pretty bad, yeah. In in this case, we actually know there is a spell in the Nardis hand that that will be discarded, but it's not the good one. The good one is Shrikma. You can't that one can't be hit. 
So he might play it, or he might even just wait until he can play the Pyromancer and then play that. But again, at this point, he runs into the fact that the Burp Decay can just be casting response, will be, which would be much, much worse for him. We well, can make two tokens, right? If you have uh, an instant, yeah, he's got a yeah. lightning bolt in hand. Yeah, yeah he can. Yeah, but uh, uh, but then he loses the pyromancer, and he loses the bolt for without very much value as well. Yeah, I think he, I think he probably should just play it and take the abrupt decay. Okay, well that's what we're going to see here. Inquisition of Kozilek, Gucci reveals the hand, and abrupt decay hits the bin. How do you feel about opponents who immediately put the only Inquisition target straight into the graveyard? You know, when they know about it. Which is decay. Like, he, this case, he just said, one man of this card, your Inquisition, right? That's the only thing the card does, and yeah. we know that. I have no problem with that at all. But if I don't know your hand, I want to look at it. Yeah. You I don't, you I don't like enjoy it. it. You well, don't enjoy that sensation. Give me a hand. Please. I especially dislike it when they have a card uh, that you can take, but it's obvious that you take the other one. Yeah. You know, you're like, you're on five life, they have a lava axe, yeah. and, and a one one. And you're like, discard spell. They're like, they're going to discard the Lava Axe. Like, it's my choice. Yeah. And I'm choosing the Lava Axe. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, you, you have no control here. Yeah, don't make the obvious choice for me. Yeah. I want the satisfaction of being right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what do we play Magic enough for the satisfaction of being right? I, I, do, I have to say, you know? most of the time, not that this isn't, you know, a particularly difficult thing. Most of the time I play Magic with people who are much better than, better, better than me at the game, right? So when I'm cubing or doing anything like, like that, sometimes if I don't know what to target with my Doom Blade, I'll just tap two mana and, and <laughs> reveal it and see which one they put in. Like, yeah, that one. Yeah. Because, you well, know, that's good to know. Especially uh, in, like, a, a ca well, in a casual setting, often, you know, they'll do the most obvious play to just, you know, to save time and keep it easy. But, uh, well, now I'm not going to do it against you. Actually, well, no, I will. And then you'll do it, and then I'll be like, no, the other one. But that seems like you're just a, a recipe for... Should I... Is this one of the situations where I should random? Whether this is what... Yeah, you got to get, get those I, dice. Got to get those dice. Got to get those dice. So there's the exchange we talked about, ladies and gentlemen. We saw the young pyramids come down, and in response, the shriek more. But uh, already two tokens created from the uh, from the young peasy before it departed. Uh, by the way, do you know what uh, shriek more is in French? I have no idea. It is the early girl. The what? Early girl. Okay. It's it's her her girly. I've had okay, my uh, my good friend Jean Julien Zille uh, pronounce that for me many times, and that was my <laughs> best attempt. So uh, you'll forgive me for not getting it 100 percent correct. Yeah, that is interesting. There are a lot of very interesting card names in, in other languages. Bog Tatters in German is Zumpflumpf. Zumpflumpf? Yep. That's a nice name. It looks like something like a Noompa Loompa would say. Yeah. <laughs> the Zumpflumpf, yeah. And an abrupt decay to take care of Pyromancer number two as Gucci continues to apply the pressure in the air. Yeah, I, I, I like the German Wild Nikado. It's just the Wilder Nikado. It's Nicado. Wilder uh, Nikado, yeah. yeah. Ah, but a Lingering Souls is going to put up the defenses for Echi Verity. He's going to be able to flush it back as well. So all of a sudden, on the defensive very nicely. You know the card Coercion in German is, is Zwang. Zwang. Zwang, right? Okay. And the card Duress in German, also Zwang. Oh, in Portuguese it's the same. Yeah, they're right. They're both called the same thing. They're both called the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's not Zwang, because we're a real language with vowels and stuff. Okay, but, excuse me. But, yeah, they're both called Coergir. Uh, or Corso. Oh, that definitely sounds like a much more real... Which. Oh, and you can't even remember the word. You're talking about it being well, a Well, that's because word. when they released Duress again, they changed the name. Yeah, right. So we have some Duress. Oh, some Duress is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, okay, whoops, we'll fix this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Here's a Faithless Looting now. Echivera having to think about what he's going to discard. There are some pretty wild German card names. I think my favorite. My, my <laughs> Wilder, even? The Wilder, yeah. But, uh, of course, the French, uh, they don't stop. The party don't stop with the French. Uh, have you ever cast Descend Upon the Fisherman? Oh, yeah. yeah I know. <laughs> what a card name. What a card name. Descend. Uh, there's a translation error with uh, Descend Upon the uh, uh, upon the Sinful there, for those of you who haven't seen that one. Look at this one, though. A Bedlam Reveler cast for Jose Echevera. And that Lingering Souls has really led to pretty good stuff from him now because... He's not only put up a defense force to protect his rather tenuous life total, he's now refueled very nicely, and look at that hand. Yeah, I mean, it, he's in, uh, in a very, very good spot now. He's really started to turn the corner here. His opponent needs probably a Lingering Soul into a Siege Rhino. Uh, as, and that's as, just for starters. Well, then he, if he draws Dad, I think he just wins. Really? Well, he doesn't because Echiri has another Linger Souls in hand, yeah. right? So, yeah, that doesn't even win. He's got a game. half a million blockers here. Yeah. Three quarters of a million, even. I haven't counted. Many, many. Many, many. 
Yeah. I mean, two Sage Rhinos. That would be good. Double Rhino. That would do it, yeah. Across the sky. Get yeah, it done. There are only two in the DAC, you know. But. Echivera. Poised here to really... Uh, oh, look at this. I love it. Right click, attack with all. Except Pyromancer, bring it back. Click on it again, bring it back. I, mean, no. I, don't, I don't even mind attacking with the Pyromancer. Not going to do it. Maybe going to do it? At this point, he's got to be thinking, like, should I bother to play around something like Damnation? You know, it's very unlikely it's in my opponent's deck, but he could be in my opponent's deck. I know he has it in the sideboard. Mm -hmm. uh, is it the way I lose this game? Guichi. Under a ton of pressure here. Echivera certainly winds blowing in, uh, in his direction right now. Or I guess winds blowing at his back is probably better. You don't really want the winds blowing in your direction. You start getting yeah, you know, I, I tears streaming out of your, your, your eyes and that sort of stuff. Were you there when Ben Stark said, yeah, this is really tough. It's a, a, a real downhill battle. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah that did poor, happen. I think it was on stream, too. <laughs> oh, no, poor old Ben. He can't catch I'm a not break. not sure. Yeah. Three more tokens now from this Lingering Souls. Echivera is going to attack after having cast them. I don't know what difference that made, but sure. Oh, because the Pyromancer. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, and I like the Battle and Reveler sitting back because of the Tree Up Village. Yeah, sure. 3-3 three, three Trample. But it's interesting that the Linger Souls wasn't flashed back. Even though, you know, it would also generate an extra token from doing that. And it's likely that he'll do that anyway. Though he might play the second Battle and Reveler he has in hand. But yeah, at this point he's thinking, how do I lose this game? Yeah, it's a, it options. is actually a downhill battle for him here. Yeah. His two options are Damnation or, you know, three top village attacking plus Sage Rhino. And he's going to make it so that this won't be a way to, for him to die to three drop village in, in any capacity here. He was pretty safe anyway with his blockers, but, you know, just leaving the battle rather back basically ensures that it won't happen. Trades are made here for Gucci. He's knocked down to seven thanks to that Air Force getting in. No worries at all. Young Pyromancer and his cronies uh, hit the bin. And we'll see if Echeverry wants, wants to follow up with another Young Pyromancer. Looks like he's not going to do it. Plays around that damnation. Very careful stuff from him here. Gucci yeah. on seven. I mean, he has, like, super lethal in play. A uh, Maelstrom Pulse with a flourish as well, PV. <laughs> How do you like uh, these apples, he says. Yeah, and isn't it good that he didn't play that Lingering Souls? Yeah, wow. So, super well played by him. But, though, he's still going to... Yeah, it's, it's still not going to win. Maybe. And, uh, you know, I like, I really like leaving back to Battle Rather in a spot like this, for example. Clued uh, into that, perhaps by the fact that Guichi blocked those elemental tokens with his spirits rather than the spirits in the air. Yeah. Little clue there. Yeah, that's a nice pickup from uh, Echivera. Well, by the time he decided not to attack with the Battle Reveler, he didn't know that was going to happen yet. No, sure, but right. choosing not to flash back the Lingering oh, Souls. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, nice pickup there. Not something that everyone would see. Yeah, for sure. I know it at least uh, one of us in the commentary booth missed it. I'm not going to say which. <laughs> I'm not going to say who it was. I'm not going to say who it was, PV. It could have been either one. It could have been either one of us. I mean, look, yeah. between us, we have over half a million dollars in, in prize money. <laughs> How many pro points do you have? Pro lifetime? Lifetime. I don't know, 600 or something. So between us, we have over 600 lifetime pro points. Okay. How yeah. many do you have? That's not a point. Look, can you... Because we might not be over 600 if you don't have that many. You're asking some very... Can we focus on the game? Is here? it too personal? I don't, it's like Is it not something you you ask? I have a, guy? a I have a, a positive whole integer. All right. Okay. All right. You're a one. <laughs> one. You're a one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty it's good. It's more than you know the great majority of the population. I kind of I kind of blew my rookie of the year. Uh, my rookie year <laughs> with just one <laughs> <laughs> lifetime. Yeah. How, how else did you do in the rookie of the year race? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. I was I was well and truly on the bottom of that <laughs> uh, of that particular race. Here's a surgical extraction. We didn't expect to see this one post board, but it certainly uh, has something that Echevera is going to uh, leverage here, and it is the Siege Rhinoceros that he targets with it here. Let's have a look at that hand. He says, "What you working with? Double Lansky. Love to see that. Let's see what else is in the uh, the uh, library here." As Echevera goes hunting, and there is that Rhino right down the bottom. So at this stage, Echevera seems to be in that. Uh, what am I going to lose to? Yeah, I mean, I think the answer right now is pretty clearly nothing. But, you know, if it is anything, it's Damnation. But he's still in a good spot, even if his opponent has Damnation. So going to shuffle up here as he has a, a quick uh, squiz at what uh, Gucci is working with. Those two lands in hand are not looking good. No, real, they aren't. Real stinkers there for poor old uh, Gucci main. 
and they're really not looking good when compared to the Battling Reveler in, in uh, Echeverria's hand. Oh no, another one. So he's going to draw three more cards here. Okay, a couple of lands. That's not what he wanted to see, in addition to an Inquisition of Kozilek, which is an also, also a blank ski. So back comes one another Lingering Souls here. I'm wondering what uh, Echeverria is sideboarded out, because he has a ton of discard left. Uh, you know, we've seen bolts and we've seen surgicals. Maybe he just didn't bring in the cards that I thought I would, like the explosives and yeah. the rebel masters. Lingering Souls off the top for Guichi. That's good stuff here. Etch of, Etch of Yera. Yeah, I still think it's too little too late. He's in chump block mode now, and he doesn't even have Siege Rhinos in his deck anymore to threaten any sort of offense. Uh, so Echeverria knows that no matter what happens, he's not dying next turn, even if he leaves zero blockers back. Uh, and his opponent still has attackers for some reason. And there's still Lingering Souls. Land off the top here for Echeverria. Flooding out a little here, you'd have to say. Although, uh, uh, Faithless Looting is going to be a nice one for him now to draw two, discard two. Oh, double Bedlam Reveler off the top as well. Is he going to keep one? He's got to keep <laughs> one. Oh, he's going to keep two, I mean. He keeps Sorry. two. He keeps both of them. Yeah. There you go. I mean, no, uh, every card will be discarded anyway. Taps four and just like plays them really quickly together. <laughs> You could do that. <laughs> I don't think that's a legal game action, too. You're like, I'll stack the ability? <laughs> yeah. He needs an Alchemist Refuge here, and two more colors of mana. Five color control featuring Alchemist Refuge and Bedlam Reveler. Yeah, the Lingering Souls in the graveyard there should be exiled by Leon Arno, but I think both players know that it's exiled. Yeah, yeah, as soon as, soon as it comes it, like I guess for the sake of clarity, we will uh, make sure that uh, Lingering Souls gets exiled, though. Yeah, I mean, if we see he just untap and try to cast him, we're like, well, that's <laughs> awkward, uh, but me, I don't friend. think that's what's going to happen. No, no, no. Quite an easy oversight to make here. Yeah, and you don't you don't pay a lot of attention to this kind of thing when you're dead, you know? You're just, like, thinking about what you're going to do with your prize and yep. what I you're going to tell all your friends about how lucky you how were. How unlucky you were, yeah. exactly, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, see, he surgical my double, my two rhinos. It was terrible. Here's another Bedlam Reveler. Going to discard that Inquisition and draw three f more cards. And here's a Blood Moon, finally! Yeah. Not not overly useful? No, not super great here. In this fight, but... Doors closing on Guichi. He's going to take a, a fair pasting now from these creatures. Echeviera has really done a great job, as we see that uh, Lingering Souls finally get exiled. Really done a great job of battening down the hatches and is now manoeuvring himself into a position of, uh, uh, of power. Yeah, and, and here, again, attacking with all but one spirit. Uh, you know, I couldn't tell you what is right. Attacking with both, attacking with zero, attacking with just one. But I, I do find attacking with one to be very random, and I wonder what the thought process is behind that. Yeah, it's a little weird. That's a little, little bit of a weird move as we see both Bedlam Revelers blocked. Two damage gets across to Guichi. He's going to take another point here to crack this... Uh, Verdant Catacombs, he needs something special. Damnation's going to be the first uh, piece of this puzzle, if he's even brought it in. You would have counseled against him doing that, but it would be a great draw from here. Oh yeah, I definitely would. I mean, it's the only way he can win, right? Uh, I don't think it's in his deck. Off the top, nothing. Oh. He can't find it, and the champion of GP Sao Paulo is Jose Echeviera. The crowd lifts to their feet. They can't believe it. And congratulations to the Madu Pyromancer player who has stitched together an incredible performance PV to take down the whole tournament. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, you know, Echeverria is from Chile. Yeah. And all those people cheering for him, I assume, are from Chile or they're from Brazil and really don't like Leonardo. <laughs> but That's one of the two. You know, there's a big Chilean crowd here. Yeah. This is not that close to Chile. It's like a three, four-hour flight yeah. or something. So a, a huge Chilean uh, contingent here. Well, congratulations to them and, of course, uh, to uh, Jose Echeverria. And commiserations to his opponent there, Absan Traverse. Great to see it up again uh, oh, yeah. at the top tables, but unfortunately not quite enough there uh, to get across the line. Yeah, and I think it was well played. Mm. And the matches, you know, we didn't see, you know, oh, before we saw, like, a mulligan to four, do nothing. Yeah. Those were, like, yeah. a, a bummer. Yeah. But those games were good, and they were what you expect from the games, right? They're, like, both players have empty hands. One draws a lingering souls, and they're, like, oh, that's so great. Then someone draws a battle on Reveler. There's mm. no card that compares to that in There's a lot of counter deck. So, yeah, it, they went back and forth, you know, and at certain points we thought a player was favored or not. Like the Maelstrom Pulse was huge. Yeah, it was a huge draw, but, uh, but just couldn't, uh, couldn't quite pull it together there. And you can see the crowd assembling behind us, ladies and gentlemen, as we uh, get ready to welcome the, our, uh, our GP champion in, uh, into the booth here. But, uh, Paul, I have to say, 
Uh, usually, obviously, I have to sort of sit here and say something positive and, you know, make up some rubbish about how fantastic the weekend's been and how much of a pleasure it's been with you. Happily, oh. this weekend, I don't have to lie through my teeth because what a pleasure and a privilege it's been to work with the LeBron James of Magic. Paolo, <laughs> it's been an honour, my friend. Thanks so much for hanging out with me this weekend and, uh, and, oh. uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, being my partner in crime. It's, Thank it's been, you. It's been Thank terrific. you for having me. So, Paolo Vita Damita Rosa will depart the booth now because we have our GP champion to, uh, to bring in here. So, uh, Paolo, if... Uh, well, if you uh, if you don't mind too much, we will make room now for our yep. GP champion yeah, again. I'll live, I'll live. I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you on the other side, <laughs> Thanks my friend. Thanks, everybody. See you next tournament. And uh, yeah, we're going to leave that headset there as well. <laughs> we're trying to all the all the fringe benefits there, and we will now welcome our champion into the feature match area here. Here he. Oh no, he's still okay. Got uh, <laughs> we're just sitting here waiting for him to, uh, to to continue all the curtain calls, and here he comes finally. All right, there he comes. There, my friend. There you go. Sit down here, my friend, whack this on your noggin, and let's have a chat about how it went. Whack that on your head there, my friend. Congratulations to you. Congratulations. What a victory for you. Madhu Pyromance, uh, is this a deck that you've, uh, you've played for a long time? No, actually, I, I didn't know what to play the night before. The night before? Yeah, so I took that deck mm -hmm. because uh, a friend of mine wasn't using it. Oh, it oh so it's a spare? Hmm? It was left over. That's right. Wow, and it's really done so well for you. How has it performed? You've been happy with it? Are there changes that you're going to recommend moving forward, or is it perfect? Uh, I actually like the deck. I, I don't know. I didn't test it much, yeah. so I couldn't recommend any changes. But just uh, just the Gary Campbell special. Just pick it up, run with it, and, uh, and win a GP. Uh, obviously, you have uh, you come all the way from Chile, I understand. Yeah. Uh, three or four hour flight over here like that. Uh, you must be stoked to be winning uh, South American GP on more or less home turf here uh, in, in South America. You'll take it, at least, even we, even though we're in Brazil. Yeah, I mean, any Grand Prix in South America, I will travel to it. Yeah, of course. It's the uh, only chances we have to play Grand Prix and to get uh, on the Pro Tour, so you must take them um, whenever you can. Yeah, exactly right. Well, you've yeah. certainly done that this weekend. Congratulations to you, a GP championship, a nice bit of uh, hardware for, uh, for right. the mantelpiece there, and 10000 bucks in your back pocket, my friends. Congratulations. You, I'll get you to stay there for just a second as we close out the show because, my friends, I'm sorry to say that all good things must come to an end. What a weekend we've had here in Brazil. It's been fantastic to showcase the modern format, but we are going to say goodnight here from Sao Paulo. Before we do, on behalf of the entire coverage team, I'd like to thank the judges, the tournament organisers and the players for helping to contribute to the success of the weekend. But of course, the biggest thanks go out to you, ladies and gentlemen, around the world, wherever you are. Thank you for choosing to join us this weekend. It's been fantastic to have you. And uh, we hope to see you again very soon back here at the home of magic, twitch.tv slash magic. We're looking forward to it. Of course, for ladies and gentlemen, before I let you go, let me remind you that after an event like this, it's important to remember that we're all winners for having taken part. It's just some of us win a little bit more than others. On behalf of the entire <laughs> coverage team, it's Riley Knight from Sao Paulo saying good night. We'll see you next time.